I have spent the last 30 minutes testing out audio, testing out um, video, testing out lighting. Lighting has turned out to be a pain in the butt, and I'm probably going to have to do some renovations to have proper proper lighting. But for now, this is what we've got. Look at this. This is what happens without the lighting in my room, without the bright lamp on my desk right here. Look at the change in quality, okay? Look at my face right now. It's like, well, what am I supposed to do, man? My room's too darkly lit, I guess. So I guess I just need a giant bright light right there because it completely changes the quality of the camera. <laughs> Move light out of view. Oh, you would like that, wouldn't you? You would like if I moved the light out of view. Oh, look, I'm white. Light in view, light out of view. Yeah, that's a great idea. Thank you, random chatter. As if I didn't just spend 45 minutes trying to adjust with the lighting, and this was the only fucking thing I could come up with. <laughs> Need a nice little ring light? Oh, Oval, thanks for the fucking suggestion. Guess what I've got? A ring light. Doesn't matter. The room is too dark. The contrast between the ring light. This is, this is just the ring light. This is just the ring light. Do I look good? Does this look good? Yeah, great, thanks. Thanks for the suggestion, buddy. Okay, filters. What's up, why you I'm out. straight down. I'm also gonna change nothing. Okay, sorry, different filter. How about, um, color correction? It doesn't adjust the contrast. That's not good. You guys see my adjust the Oh, I'm gone. Okay. So, I'm hoping something better now. I'm just gonna adjust the second zero. Um, Q shift? Okay, cool. That's right. That's right. Thank you, I guess. Also, great features in this program. Saturation. And I'm on. And I'm on. Put light closer. Now, the whole point was getting the light away. I understand that does increase quality. You know? But it would just be better. Ow, that's hot. Okay, we're done playing with the light. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just look at fish stuff, okay? Try turning it off. <laughs> Alright, I'm done with your suggestions. You guys suck. Departing. Back in the South Scrimshaw. There's a tiny whale. He has some vegetation on him. Actually, no, he doesn't. His mother does, though. Oh my god, my face is so blue. This is a simplified map of the local ocean topography. The deep blue represents a fault line, the planetary scar where two tectonic plates meet. As with Earth, this land is a moving crust atop a globe of molten metal. The planet-shaping force of subduction pushed ground up above the sea. Oh, I wasn't sure what was water and what was land. Chartreuse Archipelago. I kind of thought the black was uh, was water and then the white blue was land, which is, now that I think about it, kind of a stupid thing to think. The island chain runs for about 870 kilometers, drawing a ragged line away from the continent. How would this have formed? These names were given by an early survey team assessing the grounds for a harbor or research outpost. Hog back. Wait, North Scrimshaw. The body of water created between the Scrimshaw Islands is known as the Thalo Bay. The large inlet is exactly what a Brillo whale breeding ground requires. Outside of that season, the whales live elsewhere. Usually, they are found at coral reefs and areas more productive with food. Brillos require a very high calorie diet. I imagine so, having to swim all that extra weight. We now find our whales here at the border to the Great Vathis Ocean. I mean, imagine like being covered in extra weight at all times during your life. I need more energy to swim. It is a bright day in early autumn. An unseasonable cold front chills the air. Below Hello. the surface, we find our mother bracing for the journey. Judging by her mobility, her health has much improved. The delay is likely not related to her recovering wounds. The distance between the Tharlo Bay and the Southern Reef is inhabited by many large predators. Many Brillo calves are taken in these waters. Her loud songs are searching for another Brillo's response. She has been making these calls since before dawn. She does not want to make this journey alone. Calf returns with a fresh lungful of oxygen. And quickly retreats back to the bramble under his mother. For once he does not need to be told to stay close. 
undoubtedly he can also read the change in his mother's behavior. And the unfamiliar place ahead is deeper and colder. Faintly at first, a new sound reaches them. His mother startles. They both listen. It's another wail. Brillo. A Brillo wail, and it is getting nearer. Our mother booms a reply back. It's going to be a fake mimic, I bet. The calf's curious nature starts to show itself again. He has yet to meet a Brillo besides his mother. There. He spots something. A large body begins to emerge from the hazy distance. It continues to approach, but the calf still can't quite understand what he's looking at. The calf's curiosity morphs into discomfort the closer it gets. Discomfort turns into outright alarm. It was a mimic, right? Distress. She rebukes him in reply as if to say, Don't be rude to the new neighbors. One cannot blame him for his confusion. Oh. This Brillo whale's appearance was shaped to be deceptive. It is a beautiful and ghastly example of mimicry. Thick. Do they kill a giant fish and then wear it as armor? The way the jaws gently undulate is startlingly believable. The grim exterior is the work of an important symbiotic partner. <laughs> the weaver lobe. These prodigious builders turn their colonies into terrifying scarecrows by spinning and sculpting Osama. Water is channeled through the layered construction swelling and emptying various pockets, creating animal-like locomotion. Our resident weaver lobe expert insists that the beastly facade before us here should have taken many decades to complete. So he built a skeleton? It seems unlikely that it was built from scratch on the whale's back. Perhaps if weaver lobes are able to relocate such structures, an established colony was simply carried on to the brillo's back. He constructed an entire skeleton to wear as armor to scare off other creatures? That's sick. Such a fearsome appearance does much to ward off predators. The reversed head may also help to confuse prey. We do not know why she was left behind, but this Brillo is a valuable addition to the ocean crossing. She too is a mother looking to deliver her child to safety. He has pimples, or freckles. It seems that all Brillo calves are quite shy around new acquaintances. Our calf growls to himself. Scoldings are unlikely to budge his unwelcoming attitude, nor will the surprise of additional friends. The calf was so distracted by what was in front of him that he failed to notice what was swimming up from behind. She's something like a faceless stone golem. The exterior is more bizarre than menacing. It might serve as some kind of armor, but our crew is at a loss to describe it on first sight. Like our Brillo mother, this whale may also have some kind of internal injury. She is only able to produce short, abrupt honks instead of complex songs. Baby! She is also a mother. Regardless of what benefit her exterior provides, her presence alone will help contribute to a safe crossing. Flanked by these strangers, our calf seems very disturbed. New experiences may be uncomfortable now, but they will lead him to understand the Brillo way. His mother jolts him forward with a shove of her branches. It is unlikely that more companions will show up and there is no time left to delay. All following her lead, the six whales head out into the ocean to find their lost herd. Seeing the other Brillo whales is really cool. The, the various ways they can adapt. 57 kilometers from the Great Southern Reef. 
the fact that multiple Brillos take completely different strategies. When they first talked about the fact that they can take different strategies and like different plants can evolve, I didn't imagine it looking so much different. This guy would have dominated Inventafish. Dude, imagine I did an Inventafish competition and this guy submits this entire game. Like a 45 minute game or an hour long game walkthrough of an entire evolutionary fish world and the area surrounding it. Not just a Google Doc, but an entire video. Yeah, I think everyone would else would just have to forfeit out of respect. You really think that your dragonfish can compete? This is the final leg of their journey, and their path crosses over a wide abyssal trench. The parent whales set the pace at a rigorous six kilometers an hour. They swim in a typical defensive formation, though with only three adults, it is not possible to fully encircle the youths. The trek has been arduous for our little calf, but he has endured it with admirable stoicism. Slowing down is not an option. He is able to sense this himself. Something large has been following the whales. It first appeared Predator. in the early afternoon and has maintained the same steady distance ever since. I was hoping there'd be a cool predator. Hours passed and the mysterious animal failed to approach or make any concerning moves. The calf's fear of the unknown was slowly overtaken again by interest in his new Brillo companions. The stony-skinned mother whale and her calf now swim to his left flank. This calf was whining earlier, but seems to have calmed. The stony mother's outer surface has slowly morphed shape throughout the day, greatly reducing in size. It is as if the exterior nodules are deflating. What mechanism triggers this change or how they shrink, we do not know. Overall, she is slightly more streamlined in form than earlier. Perhaps she can intentionally contract her shell for extra mobility. Don't hurt the whales, I'm too attached. What to make of her either. Below him swim the mimic mother whale and her calf. Along with one of our semi-autonomous light drones. Is that a two-tail? Is there a turtle climbing on the, the, the its back? Swimming upside down is the most uncomfortable spot for a Brillo, and the Mimic Mother refused to take her turn until minutes ago. Her stubbornness may not be entirely unreasonable. While upside down, her disguise as a wide-jawed monster appears to fall apart. The illusion of a toothy beast is currently broken. It's a Snorb? Oh, is it? I remember the Snorb from the last time we played, but I didn't remember exactly what it looked like. Our calf gets a reassuring hum from his mother. This always seems to quell his unease. He is safe within her nest of thorns. He must focus on swimming. But it's hard to ignore that ominous thing in the distance. Mm. This is a penumbra shark. It is the fastest marine animal on the planet. For the penumbra, six kilometers an hour is a leisurely pace. It could comfortably stalk the whales days on end. An apex hunter, patient with experience, it will preserve all possible energy for an opportune strike. That's so sick. It's so much faster than them. It can just follow them until they get tired and then strike. Very much like a sailfish, penumbra sharks have a large dorsal fin along their back. This is kept retracted until the moment of attack. Oh. So it's like a peacock flash where they flash the fin at you and it's like probably super beautiful and confuses you, throws a bunch of colors out as they attack. With several flicks of the tail, it vanishes from sight. Oh. Panic overtakes the whales and the defensive formation immediately breaks apart. Our calf looks down. The mimic mother has abandoned her post. Uh -oh. Nothing stands between our calf and the open abyss below. The fight or flight reaction is as intense as it is instantaneous. A full threat alarm floods from the hypothalamus, shooting through every nerve and chemical pathway. Adrenaline pumps into the blood. The perception of time dilates. Details of the world suddenly stand out with vivid intensity. 
Even in this low light, two rows of white teeth are searingly clear. The calf finds his own fins now move in slow motion too. Seawater suddenly feels solid, suspending him in place. Trapped in harm's way, he can only watch the events unfold until a tremble runs through the thorns surrounding him. The mother's branches are held under tension and can be released with the force of a catapult. She flexes, cords snap, and in an instant the calf is swaddled in protective barbs and makeshift spears. The shark senses the change and shifts the attack direction to the stone mother's calf, who is exposed and helpless. Our calf momentarily loses consciousness, but the barbed vines around him act as a net. His mother whisks him away with her. As our calf comes to again, he finds an awful scent filling the water. The baby shark. Well, we do kind of know that the stone shark was the worst adaptation. He looks back to see what happened to his travel companion. The sight horrifies. It is the reality of predation from the perspective of the prey. Because of his mother, our calf is the survivor and not the cautionary example for others to learn from. Less than 20 kilometers remain until the reef and the safety of their Brillo herd. The mimic mother races ahead, leaving the weaker whales to their fate. The stone mother lags behind. Her movements are confused. She is still in a state of shock over the death of her child. Our calf struggles to follow. It is much harder to swim outside of a larger whale's slipstream. And his mother is falling far behind again. He races back to be by her side. The calf has been running ahead of her sight and then returning. The back and forth seem to coax his mother a little further each time. But now her strength has failed. She cannot even lift her fins in response. It's tired. Her old wounds were opened by the physical exertion to save her child's life. Ah, uh, I was going to say, I think I mentioned it in the last time. I don't know how you possibly heal a branch sticking against your intestine. Like, your body would have to totally enclose it and kill it. I don't know how that would possibly happen. She will not recover. Oh, she's going to die. He whistles the familiar call to play. There is no more response. She has finally slipped from consciousness. Oh. She cannot remain with her calf any longer. He continues to press for a reaction. Desperation compounds the grief. At this age, calves are completely dependent on a mother's milk and protection. With nowhere to go, the calf remains at her side. The research team witnesses the mother's final pulses of electrical activity fade and extinguish. Oh, so they both are going to die because he can't get milk anymore. Oh, free meal for the shark. There is a long pause. Two researchers start a heated discussion on the ethics of intervention. But before any consensus is reached, the argument is interrupted by a low rumble over the hydrophone. The stone mother never left the area. Oh, the stone mother's coming back for him. She watches our car from a distance. A new day begins to dawn over the coral reef. Brillo whales start to stir from slumber. Together, the stone mother and our calf have arrived safely. Though physically and emotionally depleted, neither has found any sleep. Adoption! Woohoo! <laughs> The calf gorges on milk, famished from the previous day's ordeal. This adoption in the wild may be extraordinary to witness happen, but acts of apparent generosity have not been an uncommon sight to anyone following this intensely social species. The stone mother's exterior appears to now be fully deflated. We can see a more familiar shape underneath. It's the outline of a young female whale, quite small in size for an adult specimen. She has saved our calf from certain death. Perhaps our calf is helping her continue on too. The young whale finally slumbers. It is good that he takes the moment to recover while he can. He will need the rest. 
In the morning, he will awaken to an overwhelming new world. Whoa!